Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlamyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at using esters uh, and in particular we're going to look at how you can make soap and how you can make biodiesel. Now these are two products which are actually made from something called a triester uh, and a triester is actually made by reacting fatty acids with glycerol. So if you're not sure on how that reaction actually goes, there is a video that goes into a bit more detail. Uh, so we just click on the link below uh, and you can watch that video. But uh, for this video, I'm going to assume that you know what their reactions are. Um, now, these are two very specific examples. I'm going to start with soap first. Um, it's got a special name called saponification, um, and which is obviously a very creative name. And uh, it's basically, um, like I say, made from something called a triester, uh, which is this one here, also, um, also known as a triglyceride. So this, you can see, is your ester here. You can see you've got your ester link which is here, you've got your O and then OCCR, um, and R represents a long hydrocarbon chain because it's made from a fatty acid. Um, and we take this, now this is normally found um, naturally in oils, cooking oils, etc. and um, you can use uh, type of plant oils, for example, to, um, to uh, make soap. And all you need is some really strong sodium hydroxide, really concentrated um, aldehyde, uh, and you react them together. And what you should find is you should form a precipitate, uh, and that precipitate can then be filtered off by vacuum filtration, uh, and you can actually get your soap that's left behind. Um, now, effectively what happens is you make glycerol, which is this one here, this molecule, um, and glycerol can be used in the food industry as well on its own, so this can be sold and made um, um, into something else. Uh, and also, um, we also make our soap. Now, this is our soap here. And you can see where it's actually come from because I've colour coded it. So you can see that actually the glycerol, the red bit here, um, and the black hydrogen from the sodium hydroxide actually forms your glycerol, and everything else goes to form your um, your salt. So um, and your salt is actually your soap. Now you'll notice that it has two different parts. Now obviously you know that soap is designed to clean things, to remove um, dirt and oil and grease from your hands and, and put it into the water. And, and so you can actually see the structure of the molecule and see how the soap works. So I'm just going to highlight the different parts. You can see we've got like an ionic bit here. Um, and so when this is added to water, this will actually break up quite readily because ionic compounds readily dissolve in water on the vast majority of them. So that's why your soap eventually disintegrates over time um, because um, it's actually being used up. So this bit here, so if I take this bit, so if we add that to water, then our Na plus and O minus effectively separate, and what we're left with is actually a negative charged oxygen, and the sodium will be floating around on its own. And um, this is actually um, this bit is actually hydrophilic, which means it's actually attracted towards the delta positive hydrogen. So I'm going to write this down on here. So I'll do this in a um, I'll write it in black actually. So this one is hydrophilic, and hydro obviously being water. Um, okay, so hydrophilic, which means it likes to be with the water, uh, and then you've got another bit, which is this blue bit here, uh, and that's got an R group on there. Now, that R group could be 20, 10, 20 carbons long, it's a very long hydrocarbon, um, and the R group has no polarity, so it struggles to mix uh, with water. In fact, it's virtually insoluble. So instead, we describe this bit um, as hydrophobic. So we'll put that on there. Okay, so we actually have two parts. We have a head that's hydrophilic and a tail that's hydrophobic. And we can simplify this diagram. So if I just draw it in a box here, just to show us what's happening. So what we have is like a positive, uh, sorry, we have a negative head group, uh, which is your O minus. And then you'd actually have a, a tail group that was, um, that was actually hydrophobic. And actually this is quite useful because when you've got dirt or oil, oils obviously doesn't mix with water normally, um, and because it's there's, there's no hydrogen bonding that can occur. So actually adding um, soap, soap actually acts as an emulsifier, and it helps remove oil and dirt that wouldn't normally come off from plain water. Um, and how it works is effectively your hydrophobic tail won't mix with the water, but it will mix with oil and grease. So actually if you had a blob, let's say we had a blob of oil, which was there, and that was on your hands, what will happen is the tail bit of your um, soap will actually um, adhere or is attracted sorry, to the oil droplet, uh, whereas your negative 
uh, head, head group, which is over here, is actually attracted to the water molecule. And you'll have a delta positive hydrogen on there, and that's the particular part that's attracted to. And uh, obviously your oxygen is delta negative. But effectively what you're doing is you're now allowing the oil and the water to effectively mix together. And we call this an emulsifier. And that's effectively how your soap works. Um, if we come on to the last one now, which is um, biodiesel. Well, biodiesel is a very, very similar reaction. Um, and by the way, just for the soap one, um, that's mainly for um, AQA. You need to know that. And I believe LXL as well. Um, whereas the biodiesel one... Um, you need to know this for OCR, NXL, and AQA as well. And biodiesel is actually taking your, um, your same um, triester, which is this molecule here. Um, so it's this, a very similar structure, except instead of reacting it with sodium hydroxide, we're going to react it with methanol instead. And so if we do this uh, and we gently distill it, um, then with a potassium hydroxide catalyst, and I mean gently that, um, we don't want a naked flame near this because obviously your products are very flammable. So you'd use a, either an icy mantle um, or, um, or like a hot water bath or something like that. But uh, that would be a safe method. And you'd use a potassium hydroxide catalyst. Uh, and what you'll form again is you'll form glycerol. Uh, and glycerol, like I said, could be used in the food industry. And it's also used in um, cosmetics as well to keep oils and creams um, um, kind of like in a cream lotion instead of drying out. So it stops them drying out. Um, and actually what you form is a methyl ester. Now again, the R group could be, is, it would be a large hydrocarbon, somewhere around C15 uh, to 20, so it would be quite a long chain. Um, and this is your, um, basically biodiesel is just a mixture of methyl esters. Uh, and this biodiesel uh, can be um, actually made, again, from old cooking oil. And so if you want to manufacture your own biodiesel, um, I, um, and you know what you're doing, of course, then you can get old cooking oil from uh, chip shops, etc., uh, takeaways. You can take that oil and then you can use the oil to make your biodiesel, providing you've got methanol, and um, that's handy. Um, there is a problem with this, though. Um, biodiesel obviously can be used as a fuel. Um, it isn't really used that much in the UK, um, just on its own, 100% neat. Generally, biodiesel is mixed with standard diesel. Um, but uh, and, and the main problems with that is because biodiesel, to make your oils here, you need uh, plants. Um, and to have plants, you need large fields. And if them fields have been taken up to grow crops to make fuel, um, there won't be enough um, land dedicated to food. And so that can cause a problem. And some people don't agree with that. They don't think that land should be taken up for the purposes of fuel. And especially when we don't have enough food globally around the world. So it does cause... It does cause a problem, um, but uh, nonetheless, it is seen as a greener alternative um, because obviously it, when you burn this fuel, you will still produce carbon dioxide gas, but because the, uh, you have to use a plant which absorbs carbon dioxide uh, to photosynthesize, uh, then effectively it's, uh, it's seen as greener than just burning a bog standard hydrocarbon from crude oil. But that's it. You do need to know these, um, especially if you're, um, if you're doing AQA, uh, you need to know this and everybody else needs to know the biodiesel one. Uh, just make sure you look. I've color coded the, um, the molecules. Make sure you, you look at them carefully and you know where the, uh, where the bits go. But that's it. Hope it helps. Bye.